Feedback filters are also sometimes called infinite impulse response, IIR filters. And that's because there's at least one path of feedback delay that's included as part of the system to create the effect. Now, there might also be one or more paths of feed forward delay that's included along with the feedback. To implement these filters, there are some things that are similar to what we were doing before with feed forward or FIR filters. In the case of the feed forward filters, we used an array that represented the impulse response of that filter. And each element of that array represented a gain for a different path. Our first element was the gain on the dry path. Our second element was the gain for one sample of delay, and then two samples of delay, and three samples of delay, and so on. In the case of the IIR filters, we're going to use two arrays. The first array is for the gains of our feed forward paths, and our second array is the gains for the feedback paths. For the FIR filters, we used a function called convolution that took as input variables our signal and then the impulse response to process, and it created a filtered signal. In the case of the IIR filters, we're going to use a different function. This one is simply called filter, and it takes as input variables our signal to be processed, and then our feed forward array, and then our feedback array. And it creates for us our filtered signal. Let's switch over to MATLAB and look at how we can implement and also analyze these feedback filters. Here I started a script called feedback filters that we can use to investigate working with IIR filters. So to begin with, I'm just going to be creating two arrays. The first array is going to hold the feed forward gains. These are the coefficients that we put into an array called B. That's just the name as a convention. Then the different elements we put in here are for different samples of delay. So our first element is for the gain on our dry path. For now, I'll just as an example, say that the gain is one. And then the other elements that we would put in here are for the gain on one sample of delay here, or two samples of delay. We can make something else, 0.5 as an example. Uh, if you remember back to just working with an impulse response for an FIR filter, if we had an array 1, 1, that would create a low pass filter. If we had something like 1, 0, 1, so this is the gain with two samples of delay, this would create a notch filter. So that we can focus on what happens when we use feedback, I'm just going to make this an array of uh, 1. That's our dry path, so we don't have any delay in a feed forward routing. Now let's look at feedback gains. So we'll have a separate array just for this, this one. We've got to keep these separate. So as a convention, this array is going to be called A. And we'll almost always start out with a gain of 1 for the output gain. And then we could put in values here for using feedback with one sample of delay or two samples of delay and so on. To begin with, let's start out and just have a gain of one here. So now that we have these two arrays, we want to be able to work with them. First thing we probably want to do is look at the frequency response. So we'll just use this built-in function, freqz. And now we put in as two input variables, b and a, separated by a comma. Before, when we were just working with an impulse response for an FIR filter, we only needed to put in H. We didn't need two arrays there. But because we have both feed forward and feedback, we'll put both of those in there. Now when I run this, it'll plot the frequency response. We see something interesting occurring that we didn't ever have before when we just exclusively worked with feed forward FIR filters. Here, we're going to increase the amplitude up here at Nyquist. In fact, this is going to go off and approach um, a gain of infinity. So usually we don't want to have feedback on with a delay branch of one. We'll typically pick that to be something less than that. Um, and so we have an interesting shape. We're increasing the amplitude. That's what feedback will allow us to do. Feed forward is typically used just for decreasing the amplitude at particular frequencies, but here we can also increase the amplitude. 
just like we've done before, we can vary some of these things, some of the gains. So I could make this like 0.5 and look at the frequency response. Now we're going to increase the amplitude up here by 6 dB um, rather than having this go off towards plus infinity. So by changing the gain on the um, feedback path, what we can do is change the amount of increase that of uh, gain that we have in our filter. So that's one thing we could do. I could also change this around and make it uh, minus one. Look at that result. So here we're going to have the increase in amplitude that happens down at low frequencies, down near DC or zero hertz. And we could modify that again too. Another thing that we could do is increase the number of samples of delay. So we could have one, zero, minus one. This would be a gain of minus one in the feedback path with two samples of delay. And here, what do we see? We're increasing the amplitude both at low frequencies and high frequencies change this to plus one. Now we're going to have a boost that happens in the mid range just by modifying some of these gains. So in this case, right around half of our Nyquist frequency, we're going to have a, a dramatic increase. So by using feedback, the first thing that really gets opened up is the ability to have these boosts in the spectrum where we're increasing amplitude. Um, in many ways though, our feedback um, processing is going to complement everything we looked at before with um, feed forward, FIR filters. So here we're really creating what's called an inverse comb filter. So if I add another zero in here, what we see is we end up with multiple peaks across the spectrum by adding more and more gains. We're gonna move around where those occur. So this is called the inverse comb filter that happens when you start to use feedback. Um, so just to round some of this out, let me go back to the case we had here before, which was our boost in the middle of the spectrum. And just to show that these things can be used together, uh, let's turn this into a low pass filter. So we have our feed forward gains. You can think of this as low pass filter. And then we have these uh, gains here in the mid range for boosting the things in the middle. So what is that going to do? We're going to have this bump that occurs in the middle of the spectrum that is primarily as a result of the feedback kinds of uh, processing we're doing. And we have the feed forward, which on its own is going to decrease the amplitude up here towards Nyquist. So one thing to see and get familiar with is um, being able to work with both of these different types of arrays, feed forward and feedback, and to understand how each of them is going to contribute in some way to the frequency response. So this is how we could um, just analyze it. Uh, for processing, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to like 0 0.5, so we don't have as great of an increase in the middle, um, but we still have a boost there. Now to show how we can process a signal uh, with our arrays, what I'm going to do is look at processing some noise. This is the approach we've been using previously, where we have white noise that gets generated. Put this in here. So process using IR filter. Process a signal. Okay, so we've got white noise that's gonna get generated. Previously, we were able to use convolution. Convolution is great when we have a signal and then we have an impulse response of the feed forward gains, but we can't use that here. We're gonna have to switch this over and use a different MATLAB function. It's very similar in how it's going to work. It is the function filter, F-I-L-T-E-R. And as input variables, you'll see that we have the arrays, B and A, and then we put in our signal X. So B, A, and X. And it will do the filtering for us. We'll end up with a processed signal here, Y. So go ahead and uh, run this script and we should be able to listen to the result. Here's the processed signal.
So there's several things that we now know about how to work with uh, IAR filters. We need to be able to declare and work with these two arrays, B and A, for the feed forward and feedback gains. Then we're going to use the similar kinds of uh, functions we've used before, frequency response, and here we'll use filter that allow us to process signals using IAR filters.